in Edwalls Fieldhouse with new head coach Matt Glover, who's the current 6A assistant coach of the year and state champion with Clay Chalkwell. Coach, how you doing today? Good, good. How y'all? Doing really good. Uh, coach, uh, appreciate you taking time out to sit down with us. Uh, <coughs> just wanted to, the people of Atala who may or may not know that much about you, just wanted to give them something to get a little taste and a little piece of your life uh, before we go into the job that you just took. Uh, let's talk about uh, where you grew up and what right. that looked like. Yeah, um, I grew up, graduated from Springville High School in 92, um, Went uh, played football, baseball there. Won a st actually won a state champ state championship in baseball my senior year and played for a state played for the semifinals my sophomore year in football so um, got out of high school um, didn't know what I wanted to do actually dropping my son my brother off at a little at junior high football practice and the coach then asked me if I could you know help him out for a minute because the other guy wasn't there and I went in there and helped him out and loved it and been doing it ever since so um, was at Spring Wolf for six years as defense coordinator then. Went to Cherokee County with Coach Curry for a year, and then I was at Moody as an assistant coach um, under Coach Cross, head coach of Jackson State, um, and I took over a head job. And I was head head coach at Moody for three years, and then went to Pinson Valley, head coach there for three eight years. Left Pinson Valley, went to St. Clair County as head coach for two years, and this last three I've been at um, Clay Chapel as defense coordinator. Man, that's crazy <clears throat> by chance, and you talk about this in your other video when we sat down to one-on-one -on -one with you. Just by chance, you know, you was dropping off somebody at practice yep. one day, and then that's kind of led you over into your career, yep. man. Uh, coming along the way, man, talk about, you know, some of the things that you've really learned, uh, especially here in town. I know people's going to talk about this, about, about being a head coach and, and how, how different that is and, and, and as opposed to being a coordinator. It, it's night and day, you know. <clears throat> when, I, when I got the head job, um, I had been coaching for rough, roughly 12 years, 13 years. And really didn't know, you know, I kind of stepped in blind, didn't know all the ins and outs and what all you had to do. Um, it's a lot more than coaching on the field and head coaching. There's a lot more responsibilities you have. Um, I kind of <clears throat> wasn't really acclimated to, you know, um, everything you need to do to make sure your kids are successful on and off the field. I went to Pinson and we started having some kids that were being recruited. And to be honest with you, first three or four years, I wasn't real sure. I didn't know about the recruiting process because we never had any kids at Moody that was really recruited. So um, had a couple of kids they had to be able to sign um, with big schools. And, you know, one of them signed that didn't have the core GPA to make it. And so, you know, ever since then, I made it my goal to make sure these kids have every opportunity they we can give them and make sure that that if they do have a chance and athletic ability, God-given ability to play, we want to make sure we do everything on our power to make sure those grades are done right so they, they have that opportunity. So, um, And then going back the last three years, sitting back in a coordinator and now looking back at it as an assistant, you know, and seeing things that Coach Gilmer did that I loved and stuff that he, he and I did that were similar that I looked at it and said, you know, maybe I should change that, you know. So it's been really good for me. I, you know, I know – Without a doubt, I'll be a lot better head coach this time than I was the last my last stint, which was th three years ago. So something I really, really admire <coughs> about you is that there's no ego there because the coach used to be under you. Right. Coach Gilmer used to be under <coughs> you with your staff. Right. And then you take your ego away and go coach under him yeah. for the betterment of the kids right. in the program, and you go and win a state. Talk about right. that a little bit. You know, it's it's it, I have a we philosophy, not a me philosophy, and so. You're only as good as your assistant coaches, and you're only good as your administration. You know, you, you you can't do it all yourself. And early in my career, I tried to do everything myself, and I wasn't good at anything, you know. And so sitting back with Coach Gilmer, and he was really good to work for because he, you know, he let me handle – well, he asked me to handle a lot of stuff, help him out as a head coach. You know, he's dealing with 130, 135 kids, and so – I was able to help him out and say, hey, I think this is what we need to do, or no, we, this is what, no, what we don't need to do. So we were a team, you know, the whole, everybody there, there was no ego, you know, nobody cared about the credit who you got, you know, just because he sat in that room over there, he was, you know, he treated himself just like everybody else. So um, the only real difference between this desk and the desk in there is you got a lot more emails to answer in this desk. So in parents, you know, in parents, you know, asking questions, stuff like that. So that's, that's really the only real difference, I think. So I knew it had to be something <clears throat> very special. For you to take another job because mm -hmm. you had a great setup there yeah. and, and, we're, and we're making pretty good money right. and, and very very successful uh when you looked at etowah and, and and that job came open what was it that you seen uh that you kind of envisioned that, that kind of led you here you know I, my, my goal was win a state championship and when once we won that state championship 
you know, I kind of looked at, hey, do you want to get back in head coaching and see if you can, you know, win one on your own now, you know, as you being the boss. And so I wasn't going to take just any job just to take a job. I wanted to go somewhere, one, where I thought it was important, you know, to the kids, the community, to the administration, to the school. And there's no other job important. And the, the little bit I've been here for, <clears throat> see, today's Monday. I've been here not less than a week. And you can tell the importance of football at this at Etowah in Atala, and um, it means something to everybody. You know, you go in that school, and I I don't know what – I'd say 90%, 85% of the teachers there went to school here, you know, and so um, that shows the importance of this place. And, you know, a lot of times you graduate from some place and you say, I don't ever want to come back. You know, well, they're wanting to come back, so that tells me how important it is. Um, and I think this have got good kids here. You know, I've never, I've never coached against Etowah in a game. Um, Came to watch them play when I was in high school. Um, I've seen them on film against other opponents we played. And I always thought they had great athletes and hard-nosed kids. And it's just, you know, I think this is my kind of place. You know, my, I think my personality in this place fits really well. So Absolutely. And, man, you're right about that. They do have some hard-nosed right. kids and, uh, and they're used to winning. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking of those kids, what if, uh, if I'm a guy here at this school and I'm going to play football mm -hmm. for you this year, what should I expect, like, from you? Well, one thing you're going to expect is you expect to work because we are going to work. Um, you know, um, stuff, life isn't given to you. You know, you got to work for it. You know, I wasn't born with a silver spoon on my mouth and, you know, just I had to work for everything I have. So I'm going to try to teach one kid's work ethic, um, accountability, um, and to make sure when you got that put that jersey on, it, it means more to – you're playing for everybody who's before you and everybody who's coming after you and, and not to – do anything to tarnish the name. So um, we're going to have fun. You know, um, it's going to be hard, but, you know, like I, I tell him all the time, my son played Little League football this year for the first time and hated going to practice, hated, hated, hated. And I said, son, don't nobody like practice. But after that first game, he's like, Dad, I really love this. And so, you know, it's, that's what it's all about, man, playing on Friday nights and um, um, representing your, your community, your town, you know, your school. And so, um, but, I, you know, they're just going to know they're going to – we're going to be um, – um, explosive, you know, and I told him the player meeting the other day, our goal is going to state championship, period. There is no other goal. You know, if you've got a goal less than that, then you need to go somewhere else because that's my goal. And so um, talking to the administration, people in charge, that's their goal here. So everybody's on the same page. We just got to get the right guys on the bus and the wrong guys off the bus. Once we get that, then the sky's the limit. So. Absolutely. Now, and on the other end of that, I, this is something I like to ask, right. and not a lot of people media like to ask this, but I think it's something that needs to be talked about. If you're a parent, one of these mm -hmm. kids – you know, what do you expect from the parent and, and obviously what you're going to give to them right. in return? I'm, I'm going to treat their child like they want their child to be treated. You know, I'm going to treat their child like they treat their child. I'm going to be hard on them when I have to be, and I'm going to love them when I have to be. You know, love them when I need to love them. Um, they can expect that that I'm not one of these guys who's um, – I'm not a politically correct guy that's going to tell them what they want to hear. You know, I'm going to be straight up and honest with you because that's what I want somebody to do to my, my child. You know, right. my child's playing – and I really haven't, I really haven't seen that until my child started playing sports, and now I'm looking at it from a different lens than what I used to look at it from. You know, it used to be parent come up there complaining about playing time or something like that. You know, it kind of make me mad a little bit. But now, you know, now I look at it from a different lens. So, um, you know, my door is always open. Um, um, I hope you know practice is always open. They can come watch. They can come do whatever they want to. Um, you know, I just want I, when their kid, when their child leaves this program, they will be better. Hopefully when they came into this program. That's my goal. Um, we are, we're with their children more than they're with their children during football season. So we have a direct Im impact on these kids away from the house that, you know, they don't get in the classroom. So we want to teach them life skills, you know, um, one, how to be a, a great husband, how to be a great dad, because that's, that's the name of the game, you know. Um, I mean, I think football does, and try to win some football games in between. So, uh, but I think, you know, we take care of, Stuff like that, I think, you know, we'll be fine. When you when you took this tour and you seen the facilities mm -hmm. and all these jerseys hanging right. on the wall and stuff, man, what was your initial uh, you know, it, this place? Yeah, you come into a – I think when I came in here and, and toured it with um, Dr. Ayers and Mr. Colgrove, they were kind of like, well, I know this is not what you're used to, and, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, man, this is the nicest 4A there is isn't anywhere, you yeah. know. Um, it's nicer than 6As I've been in, you know. Oh, yeah. um, you know, there, there's tradition on these walls. You know, and we want to add to these walls, these pictures, you know, right. um, every kid that comes to those doors, they should dream for one day their picture be on that wall with their jersey on that wall. So 
and then I told him in the parent in the player meeting the other day, everybody on our team has a job they have to do. Don't matter if you're the starting left tackle or you're the backup, third string backup holder. You know, you have a job to do and you're you're just as important as anybody out here. You know, in the state championship game, we had four captains. One was the offensive captain, one was the defensive captain, one was the special teams player of the year on offense, one was the defense special team player. And so those kids and one of them never hardly ever stepped foot on the field on Friday night, but he was out there shaking that hand. You know, he'll always remember that. He's a junior, and, you know, I don't know how much he'll play next year, but he'll always remember, you know, because he did something in practice to help our football team. And so everybody has a job to do to help our football team, no matter what it, what your job might be, whether it's you're the you're the water boy, you know, getting water out there, or you're the, like I said, the backup holder. So, um, you know, I think that's um, – and, 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 you know, you dream, you want to have high dreams. Your dream should be to have your picture on that wall and win state championships and have your name on a plaque, you know. Even if, even if you're the worst athlete out there, that still should be dreams you set forth for yourself. And so I hope we can we get those kind of guys. So. I, I grew up in this in this town, and it uh, <laughs> you'll be remembered forever right. if you get those two things mm-hmm. to happen. Right. I ain't no doubt about it. Now, um, and, and the short term, what is your like, short term goal immediately? Right. I mean, I know you've already hit the right. road. You're sitting here in an empty school today working. So right. Short term goals, or what does that look like? Short term goals, I want to get, I want to try to recruit the hallways and get kids out to play football that maybe need to play football, or, you know, maybe um, they need fo- and, and try to get. I met with the guys the other day, and I told them, I said, y'all know, I don't know, a, I don't know anybody here, you know, um, and so I met them the other day. I said, y'all know the guys that need to be playing, who needs to help us, and let's get them out and and get them playing, get them involved with the program. So um, that's my number one goal. Number two goal is start a weight program. You know, get our get the weight program going, um, get it where we need to be strength-wise. Um, and, and then after you get, you know, and then the third thing is make sure all our grades and our kids are acting right in the classroom. You, you know, that that's – you can't have – I've never won with kids who can't act right in the classroom, you know. The last three years at Clay, we were really, really talented. And – this was the first year we didn't have to deal with a bunch of off the field issues mm-hmm. that we had to do the last two years. And it's a direct correlation. We want to stay championship. That's right. So playing with the same kids, you know. So that is, you know, you get those taken care of and, and, and I think football take care of football's the easy part. It's just getting all the the mindset right. So that's you know, that's that's one of my main main goals right off the bat. So many distractions yes. off the field. Yes. Um last last question I'll ask you uh for for the folks of the town, and there's a lot of people mm-hmm. that don't have a kid here, right. never had a kid here. They just grew up here. That they packed that stadium on Friday mm-hmm. night. What what should they expect when 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 the Blue Devils take the field? We will be the most prepared team and the most physical team on the field. Um, we're not going to disgrace these these jersey. We're not going to um, do stupid things penalty wise and and be about myself because I think a lot of times when you do that type of stuff, it's about you instead of we. And so. Um, and you're going to have a fun, you know, hopefully a, a fun um, team to watch. You know, we might not have 20 kids, but those 20 kids are going to represent this city and this this school the way it should be represented. So, and I don't think that happened. Like everybody I've talked to, these kids are great kids. So, you know, and change is, you know, hard. So, you know, they'll adapt. I'm going to do things different than what they're used to. But, you know, like, like I told them in the meeting, I don't care what happened in the past, what goes on forward. So, um but, you know, I think they can expect, like I said, they, they expect something, a program that they can be proud of. That That's the best thing I think we can do to put on the field is make sure they're proud of, proud and proud to wear that jersey. You know, put that E hat, put that Etowah hat on your head and walk through the community and be proud to wear it. So I've been to places where kids did not wear their school colors or their school because they were kind of embarrassed of it. Mm. You know, and, and that's sad, you know, mm. and so. Our goal is to make sure that you're never you're never embarrassed at that, or the a fan or a parent or anybody who supports us never embarrassed of, of this program. That's so. right. That's awesome. Oh, if all those things happen. These, these people in the town is going to love right. it. They're going to they're going to love it, man, because they love football right. here. Uh, Coach, I appreciate you taking time. I know again the school's empty today, but you're in your office working, and and uh, I know the people appreciate you doing that. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you both.